This is an episode he put out a month ago. It has less than 7,000 views. By shop numbers, I'd say that's not great. Doesn't seem like it's going to catch on. And I don't know. Maybe it's not working for him. Let's see. Let's see the intro to this video. What's up, guys? Today I'm here at Willow Springs. It is one of the top racetracks in all the land, and I want to learn how to drift. So I sent out the bat signal to one of the very best drifters, and he is a badass. It's Andy Hately. What's up, guys? And he's teaching me how to drift. Yeah, he looks like oh. a badass. Oh, good. Andy Hately's on the show. Well, thank God for that. <laughs> so it's highly produced. How long before Added these two are well. falling out? <laughs> <laughs> You could tell that the production value, this is costing a few bucks. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the drone there that's doing the overhead shot of the racetrack. You got the little teaser clip that's going through. And uh, you got to love Brendan Shop. He's so hip. He put out the bat signal. Yeah. And you got all that uh, generic uh, uh, reality TV rock music beds, too. Yep. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what style this is. There's a certain like TV network or something, that all the shows look like this. You know who nailed it was uh, Shane Gillis when he did the Grill Sergeant? Oh, I haven't seen, seen that, that sketch? Oh, no. It's, it's basically Guy Fieri, but if he was a Vietnam vet and kept having flashbacks. <laughs> but they did the same kind of hokey production value to it, yeah. where the generic rock and the cut into the car and then showing the burger, you know? Like, you're right, there's that, <laughs> there's that style. Yeah, this would have been huge like 15 years ago. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. It, it, this this is coming gone. Yeah. It's every Kroll show sketch. <laughs> yes, right, right. Because it does the slow pull out where it's just like, "Hey, I'm Brendan Shaw. I'm just talking to the microphone." But guess what? I also have a buddy here. Hey, it's Andy. What's going <laughs> exactly. on? Exactly. So uh, let's uh, let's check it out for those of us who aren't in the drift world, as he says. No that near wall. so fast, man. Yeah, and yeah, we're putting another uh, 200 horsepower in it this year. We're at like 750-ish right now. We're gonna be up around 1,000 next year with the new Magnuson, yeah. Nuts. Yeah. So cool, man. Check this out. So for those of you not in the drift world, Andy's changing his tires out right now. After every single run, they have to swap the tires out. About a minute of fun, and then you gotta switch tires out. Every single time. Yeah, it probably burns a lot of rubber, I would imagine. I'm not even in the drift world, and that didn't surprise me at all. <laughs> I like that he's complaining already. It's, it's his yeah. first day on the job, and he's like, oh, I keep changing these tires. Like, all right, doesn't sound like you like this then. Well, he's not even doing it. The no, fucking, the I mean, driver's it's... doing it. Like, come on, I want to get in the car now. <laughs> well, we got to change the tires out first, Brendan. <laughs> Give it a minute. So he has to try to sell every aspect of this because this wasn't an exciting day. But they had to make a video out of it. Mm -hmm. So even him putting on a helmet, they have to try to turn that into, I uh, think, a comedy bit? Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Apparently, you got to wear a helmet during these things. You see the tortellini here? Oh. Like a glove? This thing is stunning. Dude. What's up, Dan? What's up, Dan? There's no way to look cool in a helmet. Man, he, no. he's so good at riffing. <laughs> I know. You know, he just he put it on, and it was like funny when he's like, "What's up, Dan?" That's good. I like, I like where he goes back and forth between self-deprecation and being the thick boy that he is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's just like, "Yeah, don't I look like a dork, guys?" I mean, not really, but I do, though, right? <laughs> you mentioned at the top that he's not a gearhead, right? And I didn't know that when I was watching this episode. Okay, but it dawned on me maybe three minutes in, it became apparent that he's got There's nothing to nothing. bring to this. Yeah. It's, well, even just like showing the engine, they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna put uh, two more hundred more horsepower." He's like, "Nice, yeah." <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, that's gonna, gonna be fast. Question. That's what he said. <laughs> how, like, you, how are you modding that thing? Nothing. Just like cool. All right, <laughs> so, shiny. <laughs> Is that where the oil goes? Right there. <laughs> yeah. Where well, do you put the windshield wiper fluid? <laughs> that's also when he's not repeating what people are saying as they're saying it. He has echolasia. Which is, a, yes. uh, which is an actual mental disorder. Uh, Albert Baris had it from The Sopranos when they'd be like, yeah, could you believe that guy didn't even show up with an envelope? I know. Could you believe that guy didn't even show up with an envelope? Like, <laughs> it's they, there's people that have that disorder. And Brendan has it, but he does it while you're saying it, which yes. is even more enraging. It's like, he's literally you're like, yeah, we're going to go get the tires. I'm going to get the tires on the car. And get like, the papers. I, get the papers. Yeah, can I say it? <laughs> well... 
And we're going to see more of that, especially in the golden hour, because he's trying to hang with the boys yeah. on that show. So it's constantly like Tourette's almost. What's the word you use, though, just now? Because I you echolation. It's I like echolation. Echolation. Yeah, it's echolation or something like that. It's it's literally, yeah, it's something they, they have it in it's the a real the, thing. Yeah. So uh, I just want to point out to Brendan that wearing that helmet is not why people make fun of you. So <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. So now we have to build up the drama. All right. Yeah, I got kids. Imagine this how I go. They call he was what? He was drifting in a BMW. Tell my kids I was doing something cool, right? If I go, just be like, oh, he's racing, man. He's in first. And you ever seen that Ford versus Ferrari movie? It's like that. So he thinks this is cool. That's why he's making this video about drifting. And he's like, can you imagine how embarrassing it would be if I died in this super fast race car while we were drifting? I, yeah. I want tell my kids I was doing something cool, like I was a Hamas paraglider going into a music festival. Don't tell them I was drifting on YouTube. Yeah, don't tell them I was drifting in expensive cars. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, how embarrassing. And you know that he's just saying that to be like, I mean, this is pretty fucking cool though, right, guys? Tell them I was murdered in prison due to my sex offender status. You know, make up something <laughs> cool. Yeah. yeah. Tell them me and Brian Caleb gate raped that girl back in <laughs> 1999. <laughs> All right, so. He is still trying to make Thick Boy. If you don't know what Thick Boy is, that's his clothing brand. He's still trying to make that a thing. I have a bottle. uh, um, I have an empty bottle of Thick Boy, of Tiger Thick whiskey at the house. Oh, yeah. A fan sent us a bottle of that whiskey. It's terrible. (laughs) I (laughs) finished it because one day I just didn't have booze. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it it was one of those bottles. I'm like, well, this is here. Whatever. I'm not going to go buy a bottle of whiskey, but it was not great. happened to my scope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a problem, obviously. <laughs> All right, he said thick go. boys can't drift. <laughs> I fit pretty good too. I got leg leg room. Yeah, who said thick boys can't drift? I wonder if he wrote that ahead of time or if the producer told him to say that. Or if he just said it off the dome. Yeah, just off the dome. The only person I know who owns a thick boy hat is my buddy Blind Mike Geary. And he does it as a goof. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say if Blind Mike owns one, it's obviously as a fucking goof. <laughs> yeah. But let's check out the Thick Boy website, because when he said that, I'm like, hey, what's going on with Thick Boy Oh, it's apparel. just the Tampa Bay logo. Okay, These yeah, that's, le- <laughs> yeah, that's so legally bad. actionable. <laughs> you know, it's funny you say that, Merch, because I've been doing shows with Mike for a couple of years now, and he'd wear that hat, or he'd wear his Yankees hat, and until he announced that it was a Thick Boy hat, I had no idea. Yeah, how could you know? I was like, oh, okay. That looks but, like, that looks dangerously close to Tampa Bay's uh, yeah. uh, logo. But what I love about this is that he actually models his own hats on here. Of course he does, of course. So if you roll over some of these clothes, you see him making faces. Oh, glasses on for this one, glasses on for that one. But my favorite thing that I noticed when I went to this website is that he's got a bunch of things that are sold out. Thick boy mystery long sleeve. Yeah, it's just a question mark. <laughs> yeah, no, this is not even a worse logo. It's just a question mark. But it's sold out. How the fuck does a long sleeve shirt get so this isn't microchips during COVID? Just fucking print up another one if someone orders it. <laughs> Maybe we never printed them. It's a mystery. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, this, wait, like, so is he having like stock made? Because like I mean, like Top Lobster does our shirts. He just, you know, prints them when he needs them. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, easy. Right. I mean, everything is is you can just print one off if you need to. But look, he's got like his chubby boy dad hat is sold out. The Thick Boy Mystery Shorts. Who the fuck is buying this stuff? No one is. This is obviously a market. Because why would you even leave it on the on the website? It's obviously a marketing point to be like, man, so this stuff like it's is, in demand. Yeah. yeah, this stuff is flying off the shelves. We got to stop doing out. that on our store. Like, ah, oh, man, I don't know when you're going to get those RTC, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, Legion of Doom hoodies, man. They're, they're just <laughs> flying off the shelves. I want one. I used to work for a uh, T-shirt company website. Mm-hmm. And uh, the owner of it. We always had today only buy four get two free, every single day. That was on the homepage of the website. Smart like, though. Most people don't come to the site more than once, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. What do you got to lose? Oh, uh, what I love about this Thick Boy site too is the tour dates page. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> when it says request the show, will you come to my house? <laughs> I can't believe I, I can't wait till you see like uh, the, the the new appearances are going to be like the El Cerrito Car Club. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Yes, <laughs> hanging with his boys, they, they get him. Now appearing at the swap meet, dude. This 
looks like Chad Zumach's website right here. <laughs> this is not, <laughs> That's not actually good. not fair because Chad at least gets a couple of shows here and there. <laughs> right. You might have one coming up. Yeah. It's very possible. Okay, so we got to build up the tension more. Let's get back to this video. Let's build up the tension on this. If you're just listening to this, it's showing him in the car and he's touching stuff and he's fidgety and these letters are coming up saying like, oh, he sure is nervous. Look at him. Nervous laughter. Oh, boy. He's not ready for this. He doesn't know what he got himself into, everybody. What's going to happen next, I wonder? I hope this car hits absolutely nothing and explodes anyway. <laughs> I like you You give them credit for wanting to build up the tension. Yeah. And, of course, the production was trying. But he was just sitting there waiting to go like yeah. a little boy, just touching things. I don't think there was anything nervous. Yeah, no, no I think, I think somebody, <laughs> somebody more clever than him in editing was like, oh, yeah, we'll make this kind of, we'll punch it up, make you seem all nervous. But you're right. He, he just, he looked like a little kid when you strap them in the car seat yeah. and then <laughs> playing with radio around to get in the car. And they're just kind of like, <laughs> touching know? the steering wheel going, yeah. vroom, vroom. Yeah, this, this fucking yeah. toe prints on the windshield you're like well i was i left you for two seconds what are you doing you should give him a cookie or something to just like yeah, gum on yeah, while he's right. sitting there play with your mcnugget body until i get in the car yeah. <laughs> all right so then speaking of children now the next part of this is them just um driving around and i call this clip we <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe you got to put new tires out after that? I know, really. <laughs> I never would have known that. Yeah, Honestly, though, I mean, this, I can't lie, but that does look fun. But it a, looks fucking but awesome. But a whole show about, like, a whole show where I watch you do it? It's like, <laughs> well, yeah. Okay, so this is the payoff. This is the payoff of all payoffs because the name of this video is Brendan Schaub Learns to Drift. So he's just sitting shotgun here as the other guy's doing all the work. So then they're like, all right, now you know how to do it. Get in your truck. And make it happen. <laughs> and um, I've seen a few of the Fast and Furious movies. This is not drifting. What, what we're about to see Brendan Schaub do here. Says Brendan driving. Okay, he, he peeled out. And now he's turning. <laughs> he's he's turning. got a signal on. <laughs> this looks like when we used to do donuts in like high school. Yeah, I think he just made a complete stop at a stop sign. <laughs> what the fuck is he doing? <laughs> Now he's parallel parking. And those were the highlights. Yeah. I would have been like, listen, can you just go in my truck and we'll film you doing it? And then yeah, I can look like I'm cool. Yes. And the guy's just like, no, because then you all need new tires and we don't have tires <laughs> don't here. Have tires. Like, uh, good point. I got to drive home after this. Oh, I got to pull up the, uh, the video. The comments under this video are very funny. That's how you know what an old man I'm becoming. It's like when I see somebody in a truck do a burnout nowadays, like I constantly just think to myself, but sir, your tires. Yeah, what are you, what are you thinking? What are you, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> like we're, we're not in a good economy right now. Uh, so <laughs> Brendan gives off the vibe that he's literally never been near a car in his life. <laughs> they call him Brenda. Brenda should be required to wear that helmet 24 <laughs> 7. That's great. This, this is pretty much the worst video ever made. <laughs> I'm surprised. This is great. I'm okay. surprised they let Brendan near race fuel with how much he bombs. <laughs> <laughs> call mats are funnier than anything Brendan's ever said. I know. I love Brendanisms. Call mats. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Brendan drifts as good as he works on his trucks. <laughs> <laughs> this has Make a Wish written all over it. <laughs> it's just fucking hilarious. He's a buffoon. Uh, he really is. <laughs> All right, let's shift gears. Let's go to the golden hour. That's not Ooh, a comedy shift gears. show. I see what you did there. Uh, I'm a pro. Let's head over to the golden hour. Now, of course, the golden hour, Chris D'Elia, Eric Griffin, <sighs> and Brendan Shop all team up. I got to first show you guys the thumbnails on this YouTube page. Thank God Carl actually pulls clips before the show because trying to skim through this show is oh, it's brutal. brutal. It's, it's rough. My least favorite part about this are these thumbnails. Every single one is these three assholes losing their minds 
laughing their proverbial asses off. And it's, I mean, you can pretty much just take any pose of them laughing and put it on any video and call it the show. And that's, you know, what's great too is none of these are from the show. You know, they all have to like make a face for the thumbnail. Yeah, that you know they all do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's do one for our thumbnail that I'm going to make later. Okay, good stuff, guys. <laughs> you really will use it's that. It's so dumb. <laughs> all right, so let's get into the golden hour. And this episode, I've watched a few of these, and it's usually just devoid of any type of points or reason or anything. Just these guys rambling about nothing. They don't even Griffin, seem like they're friends. No, they don't like it. It seems like you just took three guys, picked three guys up from yeah. the airport terminal and said, here, just, you're doing a podcast now. No, I, I think the pitch was, do you like paychecks? <laughs> yeah, I like paychecks. All right, we got we got okay. for you. You got detention with these other two. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Eric Griffin actually tries to get the conversation started on the show. This is how it starts off. And I just have to say that this is not a show. <laughs> this is not what I would do if I was sitting down with two other comedians and going, all right, let's start riffing on uh, something. Do you, do you guys have something that, like, with your wife that you guys have in common that this is why you know you're with this person? You know what I mean? Like, is there, like, some kind of, because, like, <laughs> yeah, took, wait, I mean, we're all, yeah, she, well, well, Chris, well, Chris is like, yeah, yeah well, mine I forgave like me for all the sex trafficking allegations. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, like, she's a keeper, like, dude. Yeah, we both like that I run a sex call, which is pretty cool, <laughs> so we got that thing going for us. <laughs> Why even bring up wives? Brendan Schaub, obviously, was trying to hook up with Kalila. That's, that's a whole thing about him cheating. And then Chris D'Elia is, like, the most famous cheater in America right now. And Eric Griffin goes, hey, how cute is it that we have our wives with us? Huh? Isn't that fun? <laughs> what? He's like, hey, why don't you shut the fuck up? <laughs> <laughs> he's the only one that mar whose marriage is going well. Yeah, yeah I think that's what he's saying. Marriage, huh, boys? Huh? Am I right? High five. <laughs> Eric Griffin's like, isn't it great when you have no other options other than your wife and so you can just be faithful to her? <laughs> Such <laughs> a simple like, no, life. I don't, don't know what that means. <laughs> All right, let's see what he's talking about here. I got like TV you, shows, food. No, 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 because like we had this stupid chair in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. it, it's supposed to go on the the the, uh, the balcony. It's like an outdoor chair, but it's kind of comfortable, and we've kept it in the room, put clothes on it and stuff. But we got all this baby stuff now, so we had to move it. But we moved it like it's sitting in the stupidest place right. in front of our dresser. Right. It's in the way. That, that shit's been there for like two weeks. Yeah. And then I, I look at it and I go, oh, neither one of us care. Right, right, right. Got it's it. It's not yeah. priority right now. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but still, it's like that's a thing that like. You connect on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a parent thing, though. You don't even think about it. But but I'm saying you if you're like if you're like a neat freak and the other one's not, it's right. not necessarily going to work. But is there some uh, kind of thing working. you guys have with your wife that you're like, oh, this is how we connect? That's Every a drop show. I have on my soundboard applies to that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I've got it's, five. it's rambling. It's unfunny. It's can I, boring. Can I, point out, can I point out the big takeaway from this clip, though? Yeah. Is that Brendan is such a fucking idiot, right? That he doesn't know how to connect with another human being on anything but like these. It, like So literally he goes, is there something like a bond you share with your wife that you know you're with the person? And he's like, you mean like TV shows or like food? Yeah. Yeah. Those are literally the first two things he went to. Like TV you mean like Beyonce? Like, no, <laughs> yeah. I meant like, okay. Like tires? Yeah, yeah, buddy. Like <laughs> exactly. tires. So Chris takes over here, and Brendan Chubb does the opposite of what you're supposed to do on a show, an improv-style show. He does the good old no butt and thwarts the conversation. Oh, no. Uh, that's funny. The, the You know, well, before we even get into that, the they say that, and this is crazy because I've tried it and I've tested it out. If you have one chair in your bedroom, you'll put a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah. Always. Always. But if you put another chair there, you won't put stuff Not on true. both of them. Not Why I have to put, point this out. Before he does what he's about to do, he just repeated Chris D'Elia. Always, always. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just like uh, what you were cheers, talking about. Cheers. Uh -huh. uh, cheers. That's funny. Cheers. The, the, you know, well, before we even get into that, the, they say that, and this is crazy because I've tried it and I've tested it out. If you have one chair in your bedroom, you'll put a bunch of stuff on it. Yeah. Always. Always. But if you put <laughs> another chair there, you won't put stuff Not on true. both of them. Not Depends okay. how messy you are. Okay. Okay, but it worked for me. Ball. It worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> the test worked for me. <laughs> yeah, but your well, wife will put some like data. eight chairs in there with, with tables, and there'll be a swing. And yes. She does go overboard. Yes. Yes, she will. Yes, she, yes, she will. 
is a rough start. I would kick this guy out of my poker game. I'd yes. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. This no. was a bad idea. It's we're on me, Eric. We're not it's talking about me. bedroom chairs here, sir. <laughs> yeah. We're playing poker. I'm sorry. One more peep out of you. Just look at the porno deck and pretend you like women. You know, I said this on our show and Carl was on there, but like for a guy who doesn't drink or do drugs, supposedly. Chris D'Elia looks like a guy who drinks and does drugs. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yes. Like, yeah. He looks rough. Yeah, Absolutely. he's he's living hard. Whatever he's doing, he's doing it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he's doing it too much. <laughs> I like that he goes, you know, I- I've heard that people say, you know what they say is if you put one chair in, this happens, two chairs. I've never heard this conversation ever in my life. I don't know what he's talking about. And then Eric Griffin tries to make it interesting. He's like, yeah, I mean, you guys probably put a swing in there. Like, Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Why not? <laughs> and it's just, it's just all like th- these conversations. It's just blurred together, and it's all yeah. therapy talk. It's literally like, yeah, you know, if you put one chair in your room, you'll put a bunch of stuff on there. But if you put two chairs in your bedroom, you'll never work another day in your life. You're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. just, are wait, we even having the work? same conversation? <laughs> uh, so this is, and and Brendan Schaub tries to be cool at all times. Yeah. So he uses. Weird words uh, like that don't work in the context of the conversation. Like bad it signal. Was, <laughs> like bad signal. I got another example. Like three nights ago, and Kristen was like, hey, if I stay up late tonight, will you get up with the kids tomorrow? And I said, sure, what are you going to do? She's like, I want to clean the, the house. So I said, and stay up late. You, she says, she says, I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. I want to do it. I have the, the energy to do it. She's I'm locked like, in. She's like that dude. I'm locked in. I'm I locked in. And um, so I was like, <laughs> all right, if you're gonna clean the place, then sure. He just said, stay up late and clean. Savage, bro. bro. Savage, dude. It's savage. She's a the, crazy person. Brendan Chubb looks like he's doing a skit where he knows he doesn't belong with the other people on the show. <laughs> And it's just trying to fake it so no one notices. Well, that's most Brendan Schaub podcast appearances. He's always yeah. like panicking and being like, say something, say something, say anything. And, Savage. Oh, stayed up late? Savage. That's where the appellation yeah. comes from. Yeah. He's got nothing, so he might as well just say the last word that He's was got said. nothing, so he might as well just say the last words that the last person said. <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Guy. <laughs> so this is how right, right here this is how you know that Chris D'Elia and his wife do not get along this is proof right here I, I don't I, I, I mean mine are I would get general like last night she made I can't remember what it was but she made a joke that was so funny and smart to me and I was like god damn like you know how sometimes you, like she'll surprise you like your, your girl or whatever like you're like not many people would fucking make that joke. And it's on the wavelength that I'm on. Like, just... it's. So, and I did have a moment last night where I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm like... My wife, she's not like those teenagers I fuck on the road. Like, she's got a brain <laughs> in her head. It's, it's unbelievable what, what she comes up with. This like is the guy this. who's he, cheating on his wife all the time. He's just like, my wife is amazing. I he, he never loved someone so much. He already has a kid and a wife, and he's like just now going, wow, you know what? I'm starting to realize I think I really love my wife. Hey, Mersh, I didn't know what love was until I met my wife. That's that's someone who's cheating who says yeah. shit like that. I didn't know what love was until I met a woman who has a very high threshold for what she's willing to put up with. <laughs> and I said, you're perfect. <laughs> and I did have a moment last night where I was like, man, I, I'm, I'm like, it's so cool that she does that. It keeps me stimulated and it's funny and I'm lucky. You know, so there was that moment then last night. But if you want to get real specific to like a chairs in the middle of the room in yeah, front yeah. of the dresser, <laughs> I'd have to think about it. Yeah. He can't think of one thing that makes them compatible. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. She told, she told a joke that I laughed at. Um, <laughs> what was the joke? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah, I she's fantastic. Remember, but it was brilliant. <laughs> <Yeah>. Brilliant. <laughs> he sounds a little afraid. So then Eric goes into this really boring story. Like Eric slows everything to a halt. On this show, and this show is fast paced. It's just constant talking and noise going on. But I don't know why they brought Eric onto the show full time. Because I remember in the, in the, when we first when I we moved, but when she first oh, moved, oh, well, I can answer that, that for you before, because Theo Von left. Like, I, and, I had, uh, this is the only guy who's willing to work with a rapist. Y- yes, correct. Because <laughs> right, much. Cause this used to be King and the Sting. Yeah, and then um, Eric Griffin would come on as a guest a lot. And then Theo Vaughn's like, I gotta get the fuck away from these people. Smartest. Because then movie it was the King, made. the Sting, and the Wing, which was 
ridiculous because they were trying to say that Crystalia has a beak, so now he's the wig. Whatever. It's it's also stupid. So that yes, Eric Griffin gets the full time gig to do things like this. I remember in the, in the, when we first when I we moved, but when she mm. first moved into my place that I was at before, it was like I I had like I I had a honey spoon I called it, and she was like, "What are these baby spoons?" And she it was a whole big deal. Mm. And she like threw my baby spoons away, and I was like, "Those are my honey spoons." It was a whole big deal. It's just for you to eat honey. Yeah, just to put honey in my coffee. <laughs> so cut to <laughs> use a fucking regular spoon. No, yeah. because the debu- get one of those bears. You know and I don't just gotta squeeze explain myself in. to you. Go fuck yourself. All right. right? <laughs> and that's not real honey. That, that you, there's a whole honey I scandal. Get it, right? Nick, look it up. There's All a honey right. scandal. Nick, 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 don't look it up. Look it up, Nick. Okay. Hey, are we vibing? Don't let him bully you, Nick. Is Eric vibing right now? Yeah, vibing. He's talking about honey conspiracy. No, They're saying the honey. A lot of the honey in stores. It's all fake. It's not from bees. It's all corn syrup. You know, so it's not beef. Somebody should be snooze. Somebody you didn't know be that. Food. Yeah, I get my honey. Oh, by the way, kid, in Denver. Don't give your kid honey. You can't have it. Till, they can't True. have it till like four years True. old. I well, mean, if your kid's a pussy, you know, but um, what the fuck is going on? Uh, that's what this show is. That right, that bit right there encapsulates, encapsulates this show. It's ridiculous. It's These guys are talking about in a nonsense, diner, and they're all talking over each other. And Brendan Schaub could be in any conversation. Are we vibing right now? Are we vibing? Yeah. <laughs> Honey's not real. What? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, clearly they think they have some momentum going. And yes. That's gold. All right. So this is weird because Nick, the producer, you just heard them call out. That's the other thing about these shows. And I know you guys have a producer on Revenge of the Sis who does a great job. Yeah. These shows, all, well, I like them. These <laughs> shows kidding. all have <laughs> three or four guys in a booth somewhere across from them running the show as if it's that difficult to play a video clip or whatever they have to do from time to time. Oh, it drives so, us nuts. Me and Royce bitch about it all the time. Like, like what we could accomplish if we had a studio with like in studio producers doing yeah. things like a staff running around grabbing coffee, like at gas digital. I'm like, we would be, we would be killing it. But like these guys just come in and like, yeah, you ever have like a chair in your room? And it's like, <laughs> man, I love my wife. <laughs> Fuck. You just bring something, bring, bring a better anecdote, asshole. Well, yeah, even like Garrett on Compound Media, like with the Anthony show and shit, like the the stuff that they're able to pull up mid conversation, the, the, the hosts aren't asking for it and they're able to like pull shit up that's relevant to what they're talking about. Or even on the Shuli Network, got to give huge props to those guys because they're photoshopping shit on the fly and then bringing it up and putting it on the screen as the show is going. I don't know what these assholes do. They do nothing. You mentioned Kumia. I checked him out not too long ago, and he was basically questioning, what is a show anymore? That was... <laughs> Good question. Yeah. <laughs> He's Everyone's going on and on. Now. He's like, I, I don't know. Everything's a show, so nothing's yeah. a show. I, not, this is that in a nutshell. This yeah. is not a show. It's not a show. Yeah. They just show up, and they just make noise for a while. But was... Anthony, I didn't see that clip. Was he watching opiate Gebhardt's? <laughs> when he asked, what the fuck's a oh show anymore? Oh, my God. Those are bad. <laughs> These are so bad. Opie just drinking a beer in front of a pinball machine. God, I hate him. He sucks so bad. And then he pulls out these highlights from that show that are the most mundane thing you've ever seen in your life. And he's like, check out this if you want to see the full thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Watch the show when it airs. Like, okay, Guys, well, if you I'm like the good. golden hour and you like talk about wives and where to move chairs in your apartment, <laughs> but you just want more background ambient, ambient noise yeah. and like terrible, like just drunks yelling in the background, you'll love Opie's show. Yeah, this, this show would be great if someone was doing really bad at pinball at the same time and you could hear that. <laughs> Getting irate. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> so, all right. So, Nick, the producer, went to a UFC match the other night. And he's there with uh, three of his buddies. And one of the guys is like a male model. And so, Brennan gets very excited about this. He always loves seeing hot guys. <laughs> I like the model on the right. That, I mean, the, look, hold on. Play the, with the model guy. Let me see. Let me see the action. Let me see the four of them in action. He looks right into the camera and he puts his glasses down. It's pretty. You impressive. know what there I love? He knows. He knows his poses. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see the four of them before you get into what Denver you're like. Finest. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I did. Oh, he's doing it. The guy on the right looks nice as Nick's shit. High, so that's uh, good. But like, um, you know what I like, Nick? But, you know what I like? This mm-hmm. I know you're hardcore. Mm-hmm. You showed up for the first prelim. I asked Callan, I go, this is going to dictate whether you're a real fan or not. What time did you, did you get to the arena? He goes, 7 o'clock. I went, not a real he's fan. The guy, dude, he's the guy who leaves the baseball game when he, oh, they're going to win. I'm going to leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Those guys, they don't stay the whole time. And that's fine. Oh, dude, he's kind of just chilling right there, that guy. That's my boy. He was on every Taco Bell in America for like six months. What do you mean on every Taco Bell? On outside of it, they had his Really? His of course he was. Look at him. Pimping chalupas? Look at him. 
dude. Oh, yeah. Live my He's ass. a handsome bastard. So all I could think of when he was going pimpin' chalupas, <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's going to add into a stand-up act. If he's still doing stand-up, which I don't know if he is. I think he retired. Think that, he's, that's going to be gonna a punchline. that down in his notebook? Yes, because I was listening to, uh, I think it was Why Are You Laughing, Blind Mike Project, where they were playing his second special. Hmm. I don't know if it's Showtime or, or what it was on, but he was not prepared to do a special at all. He had no material at all. Everything was a setup, and there were no punchlines. He, he would be like, yeah, Taco Bell, Pimp and Chalupas. Pimp and Chalupas. Was, it the, was it the one where he talks about Mexican food a lot? Yes. That yes, was the last is... one, and that was the one that was yeah. his independent one. Because okay. we watched that, too, on our show. And <laughs> it's, it was... it's so bad. He's like, yeah. my wife, I, I tell her, man, this is spicy. You it's know, the like, one okay. where he stole the uh, Nick Swartz and Fajitas bit. About the oh. sizzling and everything, he lifted that directly from Nick Swardson. <laughs> and not as well, I, no. <laughs> I will have to say. <laughs> yeah. He left out the fun. Okay, so the name of this episode is Life is a Highway. So when they name the episode this, they must think this is the best bit that happened during the right. show. So this is it right here, everyone. I jogged on the treadmill at 4.5 for two minutes. Okay. Then I stopped. Then I walk for, you know, a minute yeah. and then run for two minutes. Yeah. Have you ever heard more boring old guy talk? Than it's, the fucking it's bad, dude. It's treadmill routine. They it nothing. really is the most mundane subject matter. And this sounds shit. like again, this sounds like three guys that went to college together thirty years ago, and they had one night out, like a round of beers, and now they're at the diner, and everything's all about their bad knees and their fucking <laughs> yeah, their nieces right. and nephews <laughs> and Christmas yeah. presents, and you're like, this sucks, bro. I'm out of here. And, you know, that's what I do. That's good. Yeah, I do a little interval training, then I do my weights. I'm doing good. That's good. I dig it. That's good. Yeah. You've been going or no? You said you've been out of. Been out of it. Yeah. yeah That's okay fun. though. That's okay, man. You know, life's about. Life is a highway. And you got to ride it all night. Dude, up. that song when that song came out. <laughs> when that song came out, I was how old was I? When did that song come out? My uh, mom Tom didn't let Cochran? me listen to it. She said it was too vulgar. I went, and your cocks and the pussies and pussies and cocks. I mean, it's not vulgar at all. But also, <laughs> but I can watch Freddy. Well, I mean, Bukaki's okay. all over your face and my buddies. The, does it have to be so extreme? Well, I mean, well, dude, it's about driving. <laughs> yeah, that's the joke there, Eric. Mersh nailed it. These are guys in a diner. Yeah. Trying to be funny, but barely trying. Yeah, like three dads hanging out after a Little League game. <laughs> when that song came out, who gives a fuck? Oh, this conversation goes on for a while. I'm sure. They talk about how amazing that song is. Also, and it's a so, great question to ask me when a song came out, and then you ask me how old you were. <laughs> how right. old was I then? How old was I? I don't know. I'm You're fuck, you. I don't I'm me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how old I was when Life is a Highway came out. Asshole. I have no idea. You, you could tell me 2008. You could also tell me 84. I I'd be like, yeah, it could you. be either I'm one. Sure, I have no dude. idea. Yeah, I don't <laughs> know. song's just always been around, I think. So... I always love these guys, and I give them credit for this. They're so confident in what they're talking about. They think everything they're saying is interesting. I lose confidence immediately when I start going on about bands I like or whatever fucking nonsense. As you should. Yes, yeah. I know. <laughs> I've learned. You have what a comedian should have, which is the uh-oh circuit in your brain when you start <laughs> yeah. going, uh-oh, yeah. I've been going on about this a little long, haven't yeah, I? People are ship. starting to get quiet. <laughs> yes. But these guys don't have that. So now we're going to figure out, because they like life as a highway, they're going to figure out like what other songs they like. <sighs> and this leads to... A amazing tease. It's probably going to make them all a lot of money right here. I mean, it is. It is. It's a little bit of a highway. Okay. But it's just my highway's been bumped. What's your top five yeah. songs all time, then? Oh my oh, god, man, that's tough. Me and my girlfriend with Tupac. Never had a friend like me with Tupac. Life is a highway. Don't finish. Let's do it next Patreon. Oh, okay, we'll listen because we can play it. Guys, if you want to know Crystalia's full top five, we only know three of them right now. We got to go on Patreon, and they'll make a Patreon only episode. <laughs> How did, break we, that down. how did anyone miss the only way you could have made this segment funny it was when he said life is a highway. Somebody should have said by Tupac, right? That would have yes. been the only way to redeem this conversation. That would have, that would have made it more fun. And yes. it's all too busy going, ah, oh, yo, no, what is a good song, though? <laughs> so it's, this whole show is like a wedding speech that goes on for way too long. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know good point. <laughs> yeah. You're like, all right, Uncle Joey. Yeah, come on, man. You know, we only have this venue for another hour. It's the it's the brother of the groom, and they haven't really had a relationship in twenty years. Yeah. So he has to talk about growing up. And all his remember when Dan used to nine. throw the ball? Yeah. 
Dad's been dead for 15 years. <laughs> Me and my brother listened to Life is a Highway. would come on the radio. We would dance around in our PJs. Oh, All right, shit. wrap it up. <laughs> wrap it up. Come we got on, it. man. We got to seriously. The are no, I, I the love chairs this guy. Back up. <laughs> but then when he met Jessica, I knew. Yeah. They're, ta- they're taking tablecloths off of tables while you're still yeah. giving your speech. <laughs> the vacuum's going. <laughs> All right, so then they watch this TMZ clip that's been making the rounds. Maybe you've seen it. Uh, Danelle Rowlings goes ballistic on comedian Corey Holcomb at the Laugh Factory. So basically what happened is this comic comes up, Corey Holcomb, and starts talking shit about the comic who was just up before him. And then he comes back. He's like, hey, I'm still here, motherfucker, and starts yelling at him. So they watch that. They don't understand the context of it. They have nothing. So they just they just watch the clip and have no commentary. But then it's amazing. Eric Griffin actually has an interesting story. But don't worry, he stops himself from telling it. Oh. <laughs> Donnell's a beast. Uh, Donnell's a beast. Yeah, I don't understand. He is a beast. What, Super beast. No, what, yeah, I don't know why. What's he saying? But Corey like, likes to do that. Oh, does he? Oh, I didn't know because, that. Because it's like, because I feel like this is bad. This is foul play, man. Why? What? I hate when comics do this. Yeah, well, I mean. I, I can't stand like, like, you, like you just get off stage. Yeah. Like you, like you, like it's, I, I used, to, I hate when people do this at the comedy store. Mm-hmm. You, you go on, you get off, you go. Okay, come up next, boom, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then that person has to say some Makes dumb funny. shit about you. Yeah. Like it's like, but when they say it like in a way where you go, why the fuck would you say that? You yeah. mean Mark Marin? Yeah, like yeah. Mark does that yeah, shit. Yeah. Neil Brennan did that shit to me one time. Really? What he did? I almost was like, oh shit, what? Like what, what do? man? As yeah, I don't want. Oh, got it, got it, got it. You know what I mean? But I'm just like, I don't like that. What the fuck? You already named names. Yeah. Tell the story. It's like, oh, Neil Brennan did some bullshit too. Ah, what did Neil Brennan do? Ah. That would be interesting. I'm not going to add that. You're right, though. That's the, let's, let's spice it up. This show sucks. Tell us the story. Like you said, he already name dropped the guys, so now he's already right. going to be annoyed at you. The, the producer's like, Patreon. <laughs> I guess they were Patreon. No, seriously. The only no, man, reason it's why. Like one time Neil Brennan came up in my house and he moved my bedroom chair. <laughs> <laughs> and then me and my wife fought for like weeks about that shit. He took off his coat and threw it out of chair because I didn't have a second chair. <laughs> <laughs> I like how Eric Griffin all of a sudden has a, a black F hack every time. Hey, yo, what up? I'm Eric Griffin, yo. <laughs> like, how he talks about. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I, I thought that was so weird that he's finally going to say something interesting. And Crystal Lee's going, yeah, yeah, say the interesting thing. Like, if you're going to drop the name, you've already gone as far as you. So then Brendan Schaub has a hot take on these two black comedians going at it. And I got to give credit to Brendan for figuring this out. I don't understand. Well, Holcomb might have just done it to rile him up. No. And it hey, goes hey, on and on and a, on. Yeah, I don't apparently. want to dip my toe in this pool. There's a lot reading, of beef was, in the black community. I was reading an article. It's, it's like a lot of, I, I don't know. Cat I just, Williams. I just don't know why he would do that. Yeah, but Cat's been Will doing Smith, for Chris Rock, years. these guys. <laughs> Based. Pretty good stuff, huh? Based. But Brendan's, Brendan's starting to take the black crime pill. <laughs> not good. <laughs> Brendan Schaub's going to be doing a race realist show when the car thing fails. Well, it, it's he's so bizarre start because he's doing a white nationalist podcast. He's literally well, just what's naming up with the off. Blacks, B? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's literally just naming off black people who have nothing to do with anything. He's like, you know, like Will Smith and Cat Williams. You're like, well, okay, what do you mean? He ends the list with. These guys. <laughs> these guys. These two guys. Ties it all together. <laughs> and See? also, look at, look at, once again, shout out to Eric Griffin for cucking the content again. Because yep. they literally go, well, Chris is going, well, let's play some more of it. And he's like, nah, we don't got to play all that. Like, the one interesting <laughs> clip they have. And Eric's like, right. ain't gotta, we don't want to make the black community look bad. Do something, man. <laughs> Do something for this show. Yeah, Christian Blast says, Brendan would be huge on Rumble. Yes, we got to tell him that's his new calling. So we're going to switch over to The Fighter and the Kid. They're the first ever live show in Austin. And I saw Brian Mike was playing a clip recently where Brian Callen was bitching that they called up Joe Rogan and Joe didn't want to help them out with their live show. <laughs> like, dude, hasn't Joe done enough for you guys? He's got to fucking. So they're doing a he show in Austin. made you. Yes, I know. Well, Brian Callen actually had a career in comedy before yeah, Joe Rogan, but I mean, obviously. was he doing? It was on a respirator by 2015. Right. Correct. So, but yeah, so Brian Callen calls up Joe Rogan. They do a show in Austin that's not even at the comedy mothership. It's a Thursday night, and they can't even get on the comedy mothership, Ouch. Joe's club. Yeah, that's a huge red flag right there. It tells me things aren't going great. So I want to play this clip. This I pulled from Comedy Podcast Roast, which is a newer channel on YouTube. 
but it shows how they were promoting this live show coming into it. Yeah. I hope so. It's great. And then we got Live Fire and the Kid announcing it. Live Fire and the Kid in Live Austin, Kid, Texas. Austin, Texas. Right. Get your tickets February 15th. At One the show only. Vulcan. Yeah. Special guest. Very special guest. February yeah. 15th. 2004. One show. And we got Fire and the Kid live. Fire and the Kid live in Ooh. Austin, Texas. That is February 15th, Thursday night. One show only with very special guest. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be exciting. This Thursday, one night only, one show only, me and Brian Callen. It's a live Fire and the Kid, not stand-up. It's Brian Callen and myself doing a live Fire and the Kid with some special guests in the capital of comedy these days. That's Austin, Texas. Where okay. okay, so the takeaway here is it's one show, one night, very special guest. Wouldn't you say that's probably the takeaway? I, yeah. I, I kind of got the gist, yeah. Let's see how he wraps up the, sh the actual live show that just happened. Yeah. And we'll be back, and uh, we'll, we'll, next time we're gonna have we're gonna line up some serious guests. We're gonna actually be more organized about. Yeah. It. Oh, that's a good thing to hear. That's a good so, thing to guys, hear at the end of a show. Uh, we're gonna be live in Largo, Florida. Mark Norman's gonna be there. Mm. Shane Gillis is yeah. gonna be there. <laughs> Fresh off his SNL appearance, <laughs> Joe Rogan. So definitely swing by. You know they thought Rogan was gonna swing by. He's just like, guys, I don't have time for this shit. Wow, I don't, don't want to be part of that. Yeah, that's pretty sad, dude. That's sad that he can't can't come by in his own town for ten minutes. Well, it's literally a block. <laughs> Where they are is one block from the comedy mothership. I looked it up on Google Maps. Oh no! Like, <laughs> well, because <laughs> yeah, you like, know they were planning the comedy mothership, and then yeah, I was it's, like, it's, oh well. It's right Ouch. on Sixth Street, and it's a, it's a Thursday. Like I understand. All right, we got our guys in for the weekend. We can't move them around. We have our shows, but it's a Thursday. They couldn't get a one. We anyway. we used to uh, when we would do stand up shows like in towns where nobody knew us. We would go out flyering like the day of, and we would just mm -hmm. hand out flyers, or whatever. And that was one of my go tos. So I always go, "Hey guys, we're doing a live comedy show tonight." People would be like, "Oh really?" I'll be like, "Yeah." I'll be like, "You uh, you like Jerry Seinfeld?" And they're like, "Oh yeah." And I'm like, "Oh me too." He's not gonna be there, but come check us out anyway. <laughs> right, It'll be a lot of yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm going to uh, fast forward here to the live show. This is up on YouTube. Anyone can watch it. It's uh, pretty embarrassing. And let's look at how this starts off. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vulcan Gas Company. Just a reminder during the show, keep the talking to a minimum and no heckling. Now, Vulcan. I've been to a lot of comedy shows. I've never heard them say no heckling. Because you don't want to put that word out there. You don't want to put that in someone's house. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, heckling. That's a thing that we could be doing at this show. I forgot. Well, yeah, because there's <laughs> always going to be people, too, that are like me personally. If I go to a show, I'm not going to heckle. But also, don't tell me what to do. Like, <laughs> right? I'm one yeah. of those, the minute you tell me, don't say the F word. I'm like, oh, <laughs> god damn it. I probably wasn't even going to. Guys, I know heckling is cool. <laughs> I know and your girlfriend yeah. would think you're awesome and probably suck your dick <laughs> probably later. Probably get laid. <laughs> also, not not okay. here. Guys, please no heckling. Also, no smoking. This is an actual gas company. So please, <laughs> everyone careful out there. All right. So that's just like a weird announcement, I thought. Yeah. But I, I guarantee that Brendan Shop is just like, can you tell them not to heckle us, please? Yeah. The show, keep the talking to a minimum. And or actually, it's probably Brian Callen because Brian is spending so much of his time and efforts into sticking up for his friend Brendan job. Really it's a full-time job for this fucking guy, so. No heckling now. Vulcan, make some noise if you're ready to get this show started. That was Even the Remember, announcer guys, be not nice. <laughs> yeah, dude, they're just like, no, guys, make some noise if you want to get this thing started. But not <laughs> heckling. <laughs> not that kind of noise. Yeah, no heckling-related noises. <laughs> That was pretty good, but I think you do better than that. It's Thursday night in Austin, Texas. Vulcan, make some noise! <laughs> There's a guy sitting right here, I just want to point out, wearing a The Golden Hour coat. <laughs> he's wearing a Golden Hour Oh, my Hour God, yeah, it's like jacket. one of those silk jackets. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's one of the producers. I hope he works on the show. Oh, man. Listen to the pop these guys got. Wow, the acoustics in this place. What's up? What's up, Austin? Bro, this venue is an acoustic nightmare. What's going on? Thank <laughs> yeah, it sounds terrible. Oh. Yes, it's not It's not great. So Brian comes up. He's got all the energy. You know, Brian's done stand-up for years. He's a veteran at it, so he should be really good. Getting up on stage probably knows what he's going to do first. What's up? Thank you for coming out. The Vulcan, huh? 
Come. And by the way, we have female fans. I had no idea. Those are the only female fans we have. It's yeah. usually just bros. Yeah, there's a lot of dudes up in here. Right. It's just usually the bros who, and then the girls look at us with blank faces. So, or my, me with a blank face, you with a hungry face. <gasps> Anyway. I, I like the diversity in here too. It is well diverse. <laughs> they are oh, cheating well diverse. shit right out of the gate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. By the way, Live you like, podcasting I like that just completely like dismisses Callan's point right away. He's like, "Wow, yeah. look, we finally got some girls here." He's like, "A lot of dudes, though." <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Just completely just <laughs> undercut his whole point. Thanks, thanks a lot. Yeah, I guess we'll go nowhere with that then. I was going to talk to these ladies. He's not listening. No, he's definitely not. There's a lot of nervousness that's going on here. They only sold, I think, 75 tickets. It's not sold out. Bro. It's, for it's not the a good fighter movie. and the kid in <laughs> Fighter Austin? and the kid, one of the, biggest, one of the biggest podcasts of all time. It's Dude. really not uh, doing well. One night only. We've already sold more tickets to our WTP ROTC show. In Largo, these guys like, sold for this show. pulls 75 people, I'd go, well, you know, we only have, like, so many fans. Like, who the yeah. fuck are we? But, like, right. holy shit. If, you're, if, I'm up there, if I'm up there with these two and I don't sell at least 100 tickets, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Why it's are got, we doing it's this? A bad, it's a bad luck. No wonder Joe Rogan didn't want to know part of this. <sighs> yeah. He pretty much Theo Vaughn to these guys. He's like, no, no, no. I'm not getting anywhere near you at all. <laughs> I smell it from a block away. <laughs> yeah. So this only gets worse. This is bad. Only fucking getting younger. Dude, when's the last time we were on stage together? Uh, 1970. Yeah, it's been a long time. I'm getting younger. I pulled a muscle in my neck, drying my hair. That's a true story. Like I was, I went like, and I went, ah, oh, fuck, and I'm fucked for the next 10 days. I know I am. And how it's annoying okay. is it when your buddy, when you tell him something, he's like this. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's I'm moving, you, you, you move your neck like RoboCop right now. I know, at least we're here at the, why do they call it the Vulcan Gas Company? Does anybody know? Okay. Oh. Me neither. Nothing? Oh. Did, this wasn't a gas company once? Probably not. Probably should have researched Imagine it. if it was, though, huh? <laughs> like, wow, he's just yeah, got crazy. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they just arrived there? That's crazy. <laughs> this is how they started their <laughs> set. <laughs> this is live podcasting, would you, everybody. Would, now, if I hadn't been on stage with Royce in years or whatever, and, you know, we're a little rusty, whatever, right? Like, I would get an opening act. Yeah. Right, like remember Dick when he did Road Rage, he had that fucking crazy dude, the rapper guy who was nuts and yes. like doused himself with water and like went fucking crazy. And then like you need an opening act like that, so then everybody's hyped. Like they just were like, "All right, no heckling. You guys want to start the show? All right, well, <laughs> here's these two dipshits." And they're just coming out like, "Is this a real gas company, bro? Oh, <laughs> bro, look at all the dudes who are here. Yeah, <laughs> the diversity, bro, dude." And now the asshole in the front bought a jacket for this. I, I love though the Brian Gallon. I mean, obviously, if you're doing a live show, you're a comedian. You're thinking of a few bullet points before you get up on stage, right? Of course, Fucking anything. Some, some so he immediately stuff, goes like to. Whatever. He immediately goes to. Ah, oh, pulled on. Muscle washing my hair. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that would be pitiful on a podcast. This is a fucking comedy show. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> Someone in our Discord posted a photo of the uh, theater that we're playing. Completely empty, and it says that the crowd goes wild. <laughs> <laughs> this, what we're watching right now, is my nightmare. Oh, yeah. This is my stress dream. I've done, I, I've I've done wake a show up like that. My I, wife. Did a, I did a 1500 seat theater one time, and I think. 120 people showed up. Oof. Yeah, it was brutal, not fun. dude. It was brutal. Yeah. All right, so then uh, Brian tries to uh, to make this funny. This is one of those things you just name it, huh? It's called the Vulcan Gas Company. <laughs> right? You know, that's how you do it. It's called the Vulcan, because it's like... Vulcan was popping. This was the spot. This no, was I the like spot. It. I love and, this place. This and then place Rogan is... said, cool story. And then fucking right across the street, dude. Yeah, but I like this place. It's, I, it, it's got a good reputation, and we're here, and it's about to blow the fuck up. When they find out, you know how when the Beatles, they found out they were playing on a roof? <laughs> I will say, though, Austin is alive. In comparison, there is to some what? nervous energy. If you look at, I'm they're gonna pa- mute this. Panicking. Just look at Brian's leg as he sits down on his stool here. I, 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 I will say though, 
see, is see his leg is just trembling. Well, his legs are always jumpy. He's one of those yeah. fidgeters. He's always jumping his leg, but he's I'm I'm more concerned about the look over to Brendan and then Brendan's doing the nervous sip. Yeah, and, and it's yeah, just right. it's just, they're sharing a moment of like, bro, we are we gotta pick the, we gotta pull the stick up here and yeah. and soon or we're gonna Brendan end up crashing thirsty. into I seventy five. Yeah, thirsty real quick. I love that they have to make reference to the fact that there's a much better comedy club right across the street. Yeah, way to highlight <laughs> the fact that you couldn't get there. <laughs> not, you couldn't book luck. that venue. Folks, we're gonna have a quick meeting backstage and start the show over again. Is that okay? Yeah, I, I like. Yeah, we're gonna huddle real quick. We're gonna we're gonna call an audible here. Yeah, you know what? I want to make sure too that when we open up with WATP Live, WATP Live.com, March twenty second. Um, I want to start the show and I'm gonna open up just discussing the various other venues that they have as choices <laughs> yeah. on where they could go. You know, the bar across the street's really kicking, man. Yeah. You go check that place out. We realize you have a choice in venues. <laughs> <laughs> and we actually will uh, tell you to go to the other one. Yeah, this, this oh, we'll place meet you over there. <laughs> this place used to be cool, and then the better place opened up. Okay, cool. All right. Brendan Shop's gonna save the day, everyone. I'm happy to report. Because he's gonna start making fun of the homeless people. And he's got a new word that he wants to use. The homeless there, I just look at it, I go, summer is coming. <laughs> they don't like that. They don't yeah. like that. Yeah, your homeless here are batshit crazy, though. It's not also, listen, I love Austin, but like 6th Street? Dude, it's ratchet as fuck here. What are we? I, I wake up every morning and look at World Star Hip Hop. There's four videos from Austin on 6th Street every fucking Tuesday. It's, yeah. it's so ratchet out there. I it's ratchet AF. It's so ratchet out Dude, there. Dude, that's a, sir, that, we retired ratchet. As a, as a wigger, as a recovered wigger, <laughs> we, re, we retired, retired ratchet. ratchet back in like 2018, bro. No, nah, he's pretty hip. Maybe you don't know. Maybe we don't know what's going on. We were using ratchet like 12 years ago. I think Obama outlawed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Obama was just like, retards out, ratchet is definitely <laughs> <Yes>. out. <laughs> if you don't know the backstory of that, uh, Mersh, Suttering John once informed me. That I can't use the word retired because Obama banned it. What? <laughs> he thought that we really thought that was true. He's like, Obama made it so we can't say that word anymore. I went, well, Obama's no longer the president, so you're a retired. Stuttering well, John is a is he's he's a precious gem and he needs yes. to be protected at all costs. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> he's with that. so unintentionally funny. Yes. All right, so now we're gonna go into uh, hey, you guys from Austin, you guys from Texas, you guys farmers, what are you guys farmers and stuff? So then Brian Kalen goes into his gentleman farmer bit. I don't know if he uh, was planning on doing this, but this Does he kills. realize Austin is now mostly tech jobs? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, I think everyone realizes what Austin is. It's not Texas. It's the opposite of Texas in every single way. He doesn't need sunblock like me. If I'm in the, if I'm in the Austin sun on my farm, I go... I would, I get so fucking pink and then I have oh, to go to the well, hospital. That's the thing about Texas. Like the, the sun and the farm life isn't for you, right? No. I want it to be. About, but I dude, want to be a gentleman think about the, Someone milk the cows, please. They're building that's a Tesla farming. factory. Dude. Me. <laughs> yeah, I know, what are you I know. talking about? Elon Musk just walked in the back door and said, hey guys, what's up? <laughs> yeah, dressed like a farmer. <laughs> Elon Musk wearing overalls. <laughs> I want to be a He's got a straw hat on. He just walks in. Think about the Someone milk the cows, please. That's how I would be. Dude. Me. Your hands are terribly strong. Someone massage my calves. I want to be that guy. I want to be like a gentleman farmer who has land. I want land. And if, so, and if a, there's a coyote near my chicken, someone release the hounds. <laughs> And you wouldn't let him kill the cow because he's yes, too cute. I know. I know no, he's cute. Don't kill that one. Bring me him. Bring some. Bring me something soft for my hands. Bring me the small you. Why isn't is this Texas a, farmer British? It? He's a gentleman farmer. That's the bet. But he's British. Right, because that's what gentlemen are. They're all wouldn't British. Wouldn't you do like a? I would do more of a Lindsey Graham. Yeah, Mint julep accent, not like a bring me my cows, please. <laughs> yeah, you don't think this is working? No. Is that what you're saying, Birch? No, <laughs> did, did I oversell no, it? No, it's not. <laughs> oh, it gets worse. Oh, you. Isn't that what the, isn't that what a isn't a female sheep a you? You don't fucking know. Says, yeah. You're not even a real farmer. A you. I've never used that word before. But would you actually move here, B? What would get you here? Okay, this is great. So but, but would you move here, B? And this 
audience reaction to that perfectly sums up this live show. Listen to this. But would you actually move here, B? What would get you here? You know, I gotta. I, 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 yeah, I would. <laughs> a single person. Oh, Woo! That's here. Worse, that's worse than I, silence, right? I'm from here. <laughs> Is that worse? That's worse than silence, right? <laughs> Way yes. worse. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of one man clapping. Oh man! <laughs> that pretty Especially much frames in that it. fucking echoey dungeon of a bar. <laughs> It's not great. Is that you think it's the guy with the jacket? It's got to be the guy with the jacket, <laughs> oh, the right? The golden hour guy. Woo! He's like, I got the last one from the website. They're sold out. Now. <laughs> no, they're sold out. <laughs> it was sold out. <laughs> I was gonna get a thick boy long sleeve, but <laughs> all right. So, just a few more co- uh, clips here. So they're talking about how the comedy scene in LA used to be awesome. All the comics would be there hanging out, and then that all got ruined. And we'd be in the parking lot laughing till two in the fucking morning, being silly geese. And and then that goes away. It just went well, away. Well, then COVID, COVID, well, COVID hit. Back. COVID hit. Then the Me Too movement hit. Yep. And then yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then the party was over there. And then was I was there. like, where'd all my friends go? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what Where'd happens. everybody go? What happened? Yep. That's weird. Because what he's referring to is Brian Callen and Chris D'Elia both got hit with rape allegations. Yes. <laughs> so so the fact silly. That, yeah, Brian's just like, yeah, they remember me too. And I was like, where did everyone go? Yeah. And Brian's just like, yeah, I'm sitting right. Fucking. <laughs> Brian actually was off the show for a while yeah, when all that they shit came on, up. They shoved him in front of a bus. <laughs> yes. They were, they were just like, all right, Brian, you got too much heat. You got to go. They brought in two black guys to sit with Brian and Job. Yeah. That was fighter and the kid for a while. Go hang with Crowder for a while. <laughs> yeah, it was no, like fighter and the kid. Like, but I also, yeah, I love the fact that he's like, yeah, man, it's like we used to be up till two in the morning just being silly, having a good time. And yeah. then everybody started holding us accountable for the rapes. <laughs> and then I was like, where did all my friends go? <laughs> oh, yeah, the rapes. Yeah, a bunch of nitpickers. Yeah, and then these guys called the FBI got involved and ruined all of our fun. They're seizing phones, and then we can't text each other to go, like, coordinate our hangouts. <laughs> now, this is the douchiest moment of uh this show the the fun we were having was innocent it was fucking beautiful and artistic and all we did as a group was make thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people laugh yeah whether it was on podcasts well, i'm talking about all of us not me and brennan but everybody that's all we did right it was great and then somehow it became you know it got weird <laughs> It got weird. It got weird. It got weird. Things got weird. Things yeah. got weird. But it's and okay. then also. It's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Basically, the way I'm translating this mm-hmm. is they're like, you guys used to like us, remember? Yeah. We had all these fans and all these hundreds of thousands of views and all of our shows. Can we have and those it... back, please? Yeah. yeah what like, happened? They're just asking for it back. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're not they're like, earning it back. <laughs> can you guys tell the trolls on the subreddit to stop being so mean? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was going to take more of a nosedive. He, he was like, and now we have this yeah. tonight. Yeah. You assholes. Right. That was so weird. It's like all we ever did was make millions of people laugh. And yeah. I don't know why we're getting punished over here. What did we ever do? I don't hear you guys laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what a cope at the end. He's like, but that's all, it's all right. It's fine. It got weird, but it's fine. It's, yeah. it's all good. We don't care. You know what? I like, small, us. I like smaller venues. They're more intimate. <laughs> it's intimate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the move. Okay. So now he's trying to convince everyone that they're having fun doing this podcast. <laughs> I think they're trying to convince themselves. This is this fun. Just We're in, having fun. This turns into <laughs> rambling. And I feel like like the past six months doing the podcast has become fun and different Agreed. and exciting again. Agreed. That's what's weird. Maybe it's just because you go through some shit. Yeah, I think we both got too busy. Yeah, yeah, too, yeah. Like, you know, it's exactly like I'm sitting on fucking a set doing a, po- a, a, a sitcom. Yeah, he's fucking all that shit. It's just like it's not. There's something about like there's something about success when it becomes commercial that is uh, is anti-artistic. It's, I think that to be if you want to stay innovative and different and funny, you've got to you've always got to feel a little bit like your clothing is too big for you. You can't be too cool. You can't be. You can't feel like you're too successful. You can't that that attention that public embrace sucks. <laughs> what? So 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 working on a television sitcom making scale. Yeah. It was terrible compared to being naked or dressed like a cow and being whipped by a naked crowder. Yeah. Okay. Th- this is 
such a cope right now that he's going through. He's just like, I don't even want to be successful and have everyone adore us. That would be terrible if everyone yeah. liked us and thought we were actually funny and interesting. That would, I'd hate I that. hate having so much money and I have to count it all the time. So much money. <laughs> I have to hire people hate to count it. it. It's uh, crazy. I'd be Flying so first pissed. class. If I was in the audience, it's like I came here to laugh, not hear live therapy. Oh, so 30 minutes into the show, they've done nothing. This is just rambling. Yeah. And it's tough when you do a show, like radio guys experience this. I remember the first time we did a live show in Detroit, Drew Lane had been on the radio for decades. It was like, you want to do a live show? Because uh-huh. it's weird when you're doing a show and there's no chance for feedback. You could just say, hey, it was a great show. We had fun. We were laughing in the studio. Everything seemed fun. When you're on a stage and you're being your silly, goofy you and no one cares and you're getting silent, it's brutal. Mm-hmm. And that's what the show is for 30 minutes. So then 30 minutes in, this is what they go to. I'm talking to them. You guys fucking. Thanks a lot, man. They're Should we in the open back. up the fan questions? I don't give a fuck. You guys have some for us? Let's do it. Let's get weird. Fire away. Literally anything we you got. This. That's the whole point for you. I haven't seen that. Ask- so. All right, well, I want to just do fan questions, and there's no order to this. You'd think that there'd be like a microphone set up somewhere. People can form a line, get up, talk to them. He's just like, just fire it out. They told us not to heckle, sir. I'm sorry. I'm still following the rules over here. <laughs> yeah. They said keep the talking to a minimum. Yeah. Now, now, now Brent is inviting now anything with talk. chaos. You're sending a lot of mixed signals here. Yeah. <laughs> can someone just yell something at us, please? So it seems like there's people here. Yeah, there was no no enthusiasm from the crowd. Yeah. Now, now we want to do questions. It's like, dude, we've heard you guys talk for a billion hours. I have no questions for you. Yeah, I learned everything. <laughs> Did you try yeah. to fuck Kalila or not? That would be my <laughs> question. <I don't> <laughs> We're 10 minutes oh, yeah, away that... from everybody going, hey, you guys just want to go across the street, get drinks? At the comedy <laughs> yeah. <membership?"> it's... <laughs> That's the whole point for you. I haven't seen that Eskimo bro shirt in 10 years. Oh, dude. Dude, that's oh, an old geez. school fucking shirt. That's when you know the show is going very well when Ouch. you start pointing out shirts in the audience. Yeah. This oh, is, sweet shirt. This is fucking brutal. <laughs> podcast, W-A-T-E.